got to calm down. Okay? You're being paranoid. What business you had going around there in the first place is, is the question. What's he going around there for? He's going around it's there. A crusader. Jesus, the pair of you. What were you thinking? If I don't run down there soon uh, with a box of chocolates, she's going to be offended? I've got to tell the truth. I've got to come clean. Well, why? Because you felt a little rabbit in the headlights? Because you, you think the woman suspects something and suddenly you feel worse? Because Jim? No. Before all that, because it is the right thing to do. Oh, really? It's not because all of a sudden you, you, you think the whole thing's going to come apart? No, ever since this shit just jumped out of my fucking mouth. Don't distance yourself. You did that. You did that yourself. I don't know why I did it. Survival's why you did it. Terrific movie. I like this movie a lot. Thank you. I think the thing that I really liked is how amazingly complex the characters were. I mean, they start out as well-meaning people, and then certain mistakes are made to where you can't really see them as good or bad people. And for you, you wrote the script for the film. Was it hard writing such complex characters, or did it come to you easily? We, we, I, I definitely don't find writing easy. I mean, the first stage I find exciting and... and you know, fun and, 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 and the rewriting tends to be that part where I'm really looking to find that complexity, especially with a movie like this, where the point of the movie is really to examine people and the choices they make, that at any given point we could be perceived as a good or a bad person. And, and I wanted that across the board with all the characters, even with Jai's character, who's seemingly on this mission to do the right thing. There's these weird little aspects of his character, his, his interest in this woman's grief, for example, which, you know, is even a little bit, uh, comes under judgment itself. And each, so each character, I want them to be at any moment, someone we go, oh, he's doing the right thing. Oh no, now he's doing the wrong thing, you know. Right, right. I mean, your, your character has a very interesting um, uh, journey in this movie because he starts off as a very, you know, honest cop. He wants to do the right thing, get to the truth. As time goes on, he's weighed down by certain complications. What mm. was it like taking the character from one end of the truth spectrum to the other? Um, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think, you know, Jim gains so much perspective over the course of the movie. And uh, and I would love to see what happens next. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure this is, you know, sequel material. Sequel. But if you could get on that, it'd be... Oh, um, It'd be nice. Um, but, you know, yeah, I think it's, it is right because, you know, he, he, I think, as so many young men do, thinks he uh, has it all figured out and, um, and kind of enters this situation sure about uh, what needs to be done and, uh, and, of course, winds up in a position where probably gains a level of understanding himself and, uh, you know, is um, it's kind of, it's, well, I guess grateful in a sense that there's um, something in place that sort of stops it from being so black and white, you know? And that was always the point too. Part of the, part of the engine for the movie was the evolution of people through life. You know, when I was very young, I thought everything was pretty clearly defined black and white, that things to do with moral questions of fidelity or crime, they all had a very definite line around them. And, and as I get older, I'm starting to see that my opinions are a little more flexible. <clears throat> and there's a certain amount of leniency that, of course, when you get to Tom's character in the movie, who's telling me, basically, that maybe you did a thing wrong, but it was a mistake, and perhaps you don't need to be punished. That as you get, I think, further into life and look back, that there's a sense of, there's a bit more gray to life. And that really was one of the big engines for the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because the truth... It, in a lot of movies recently, like, say, Kill the Messenger with Jeremy Renner, or mm. um, maybe even The Insider, the truth is always, like, the biggest casualty in, in life, and it, as well as in the movies. And, um, I mean, when you wrote the script, did you know how the story was going to end, or did you just come up with things as you went along? I knew a certain thing had to happen, which was the, the kind of union of the criminal, me, with the, the, the real kind of victim of the crime, which is the mother of the, the child. And um, we knew that much. Uh, everything else, I mean, 
we clearly sort of I clearly mapped the movie out for a long time, but then you know certain things did evolve and shift through the writing process. And were you two able to add stuff while during filming? Like Jay, Jay were you able to add stuff that wasn't in the script or the I mean, it's funny. I, I mean, I didn't really need to. Do you know what I mean? And I think um, it really was one of the. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a certain kind of story, so I guess scripts are hard to compare in that sense. But um, but one of the best reads for me um, that I'd, I'd ever kind of, uh, that I'd ever uh, had the chance to, to look over. And um, yeah, I mean, I think there's the introduction of things. I mean, there's a certain way you could see Jim off the page that pot wasn't perhaps my interpretation and, and in the hands of another actor might have um, might have gone a different way. I mean. It's funny when you uh, kind of um, can relate or have empathy for your character, how how things can kind of shift, and you know, I, it still happens. I mean, I was just telling Joel about uh, an account for a friend of mine that saw the movie, and he was um, quite judgmental of Jim, and it's like for me, I I have nothing but um, you know, kind of uh, understanding for the guy. You know, I'm like that. I mean, what's he doing wrong? He's just trying to do the right thing. He's a it's good funny, bloke. It's funny. It's so interesting, but, but I don't know if it's a thing culturally here. But in Australia, this, uh, they're, they're, we reserve a certain kind of resentment for, for, you know, and it comes from way back in the beginning of, uh, you know, Western, or colonial Australia, is you know, a, a thing that we have against the authority. Mm. And so people who are righteous and are trying to sort of do things right by the law, we often judge them and instead we kind of celebrate our kind of rogue criminals. Not the vicious criminals, but the rogue ones. You know, the ones who are kind of like, the ones we view as kind of Robin Hoods. Yeah, I think that's sort of becoming a thing around the world almost, yeah. I mean, there's always a question of authority in whatever country. But yeah, it's interesting to hear that about Australia. Well, yeah. authority are often the worst crooks of all, aren't they? It can be, yeah. Oof. Especially those on Wall Street. <laughs> we can live with this. You following me? It stops here. Well, I didn't ask for any of, of that. Of course you did. You bring me in and then 180? No way! Prison is for pricks that don't have that punishment here. Not you. Not me.